Hello everybody, Flick here and welcome to Let's Chat, my weekly vlog series posted every Monday at lunchtime if you're in the UK. And I am choked up with hay fever, so excuse me if it sounds like I've got a cold. It isn't a cold, it's just hay fever being quite bad because the weather's actually been pretty good the past few days by Scottish standards and you know, keep that in mind anytime I say that. When I say the weather's good to people who live in hotter climates, it'll still be really, really cold to you people. I mean, we get summertime here, but even at the hottest in our summer times, still doesn't compare to say like an average day in some places in America for example or Australia for that matter assuming it isn't winter down there or vice versa because I think their winters uh, doesn't matter it's hot there a lot of the time I have family there anyway what do we have to discuss this week well I'm going to do the usual or the new usual where I will answer questions or discuss topics suggested either via Twitter or in the comment section of last week's chat. I also have a couple of things I want to bring up myself. Nothing too major really, but first let's go back to the comments. I have a tab up here, so we'll just click on the comment tab of last times. Start at the bottom because I think they're in opposite order. Yes, they are. Right, okay, let's see what we have. 1979 Devil's Advocate commented. Oh, they're the Tears for Queers person who spoke to me on Twitter about the Tomodachi Life thing last time. Um... I didn't even care about the situation, they patched it out and it was lame of them but I didn't particularly care until the, sh until the shitheads started flooding the comment sections of videos on the subject with things like the gays are always complaining or who would want children exposed to oh, and there's more to this shit. It drove me to tears at one point, then it just made me angry because the gaming community, the internet in general, but that's obvious, is full of hateful trolls. They can't seem to handle any, any even, sorry, well. Let me rephrase that so it makes sense. They can't even handle even slightly touchy subjects with any sort of empathy. It's ridiculous. I think that hate and disregard more than anything prompts the gay community to speak out. It would have all blown over if not for the ridiculous homophobia. You're probably right. Actually, I think there was another comment in reference to the Tomodachi Life thing as well that may be relevant. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but... Uh, APGM4053 pointed out that the reason they can't just reverse the patch that fixed the exploit that people were using to have gay relationships in the Japanese version of Tomodachi Life was apparently because it was an exploit that relied on the fact that you could import Tomodachi Mi characters from a DS version into this new 3DS version and outside of Japan nobody else got the DS version. Fair enough. But surely, whatever exploit they were using when they transported their character over, is it just something like they maybe like tricked the converter into thinking their character was female when it was actually male? Is it something as simple as that? I bet it was. Because, I mean, how in-depth can it possibly be exploit-wise for anybody with a copy of the DS game to be able to do it? I still think it's a lame excuse that they, they say they're too far along to change it, but you're entitled to disagree if you want. Let's see what else is in the comments. Someone, Ordemus, thanking me for discussing the Tomodachi fiasco. And I'm happy to say that even though some people do disagree with some of the comments I had last time, there is not a single negative comment. Usually if I see any, like, say, sexism or homophobia or just, you know, racism in my comments, I remove them. Or the, the YouTube spam filter is actually getting a bit better at catching that kind of stuff. And also, if you don't know and you run a channel of your own, you can fill out kind of like, it's, it's not a swear filter per se, but there's a bit in your sex in your your what do you call it settings that's what i don't know why i blanked on that word there where you can put in specific words and if it finds those words in any comments it holds them and you have to approve them so if you ever worry about the kind of comments you get you can type in you know sexist homophobic slurs etc and nobody will ever see the comments because you can just get rid of them without them ever being public you can also if you just don't want to have to type out every bad and insensitive word you can think of you can just set your channel so that you have to approve every single comment now if you're a big channel it's probably not a good idea because you'll get a lot of comments but it's an option if you're a medium to small size channel and you want to make sure that your comment section isn't filled with the homophobic vitriol that apparently is happening elsewhere on the internet that uh, devil's advocate found so also someone said i should probably pronounce christopher's name as Gaibe because they think the German is German with the emphasis on the I. I'm not sure. I'll need to hear back from Christopher, I guess. I didn't get a comment from him, I don't think. Comment on the new mic saying it's better sounding. I'm glad. Thank you very much. And what do we have? Inapplicable said 14 plus 38. 
52? Hmm. I don't. I don't get that reference. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, someone saying so true about Nintendo. Yep. Someone clicked the video just because of the title, but I don't really know what was special about the title of the video. It's the same as all the other. E Zinsina asks, "What are your thoughts on Scottish independence?" I like taking a back seat to anything involving politics. I like to observe rather than fall on any side of the argument. So I will say that I am neutral. I do not care really whether Scotland becomes an independent nation again or if we remain part of the UK. I will watch with some interest when it does come around to the final decision. But I'm not going to suddenly want to flee to England if we become our own country. Nor do I think we're going to start like murdering ourselves or, or accidentally set off a nuke if we become our own country. I think, by and large, things will carry on as they are now, other than we'll listen to our own parliament rather than the UK one, although we kind of already listen to our own parliament more anyway. If anything, the English we should be glad that we wouldn't be able to start voting on their stuff. Because even though right now we have our own parliament, we still vote on the stuff relevant to the UK parliament, and some people don't like that we can do both, so I don't know. Either way, I'm not intending to vote, I will watch and be interested in the result on it. But that's about it. I don't really want to go into too much detail about political stuff. Political stuff, religious stuff, that's kind of the, the, the hot topics you never ever want to discuss online because of, well, or sexism or homophobia as well, depending on where you're having the discussion based on some of the comments, sadly. So that rounds up everything that I got asked on the comment section of chat number 24, so this is number 25. If you want me to answer something, Next time, leave it in the comments of this video or get in touch with me on Twitter when I ask. Because if you ask it too soon before the day I record, I'll probably miss it because I do get a lot of like messages directed at me and whatnot. So we'll close that because that's that done and we'll go to Twitter and see what I got asked there, if anything. Oh yeah, I was pointing out on Twitter earlier, today I was checking my YouTube stats and YouTube have made a mistake. So when you go into your analytics on YouTube, it's currently saying that between April 29th and May 12th, they didn't count enough views by the, the approximate 2% difference. So it's not a huge difference, but well, actually, it depends on the size of your channel, I suppose. So there's a discrepancy of 2% in that rather large range of two weeks. And then they also said on May 14th, which is a day I noticed where I thought uh, videos weren't going to subscribers, and it turns out they were, they just weren't tracking the views properly. So on, in, uh, on May 14th, any videos you uploaded, their views will be off by approximately 10%, which is far more significant. And it's because they're doing a bunch of changes with how videos are ranked again and stuff like that, I think. Uh, I can't remember what they called it. It's like advertiser priority or something. It's where the people who advertise with them get to pick the range or, or scope of a channel that actually has the ad display rather than letting it be displayed on smaller channels, I think. But either way, uh, someone complaining about the YouTube thing that I like to, and also Magic Mumbo, asked, should early access games be reviewed like full games if they should take our money, but have another review after version 1.0 ships? I think once again your autocorrect was the bane of your existence there. Should early access games be reviewed as if they were f they were full releases? Technically yes, because you're buying your way into them, but you are always warned when you do so, as an end consumer I mean, not as a reviewer that you're not buying a finished product, you're buying something that you're supposed to be buying into to help them finish, not to try and just play. Like, when you go to DayZ, which has been top of the Steam bestseller list for, well, basically since it entered early access, if you press on it, it says in giant capital letters, excuse my phone, that could be another Twitter message actually. It is, I'll read it in a second. If you look at the DayZ thing, in big capital letters, in fact I could probably read it because I have Steam open, I forgot to close it, but to paraphrase, since Steam is loading slowly, they, they have in big capitals, this is not a finished product, if you buy this you are helping us finish the game, do not expect a finished product, etc. In fact, there we go. It's actually 15% off right now as well, which is still too expensive I think for a game that is rather barren of anything to do, in my opinion. Um, I can't see, oh there we are, WARNING! This game is Early Access Alpha. Please do not purchase it unless you want to actively support development of the game and are prepared to handle with serious issues and possible interruptions of game functionality. That should be written on every single Early Access game on Steam, of which there is probably way too many. In fact, there was a news report a couple of days ago that from the start of this year to now, more games have been released on Steam than like 
the whole of last year, something like that. It is ridiculous. More games are getting through Steam, Steam Greenlight. Do they all deserve to? Probably not, to be honest. There's a lot of junk on Steam now. It's becoming a less credible shop space. I heard someone compare it to the App Store. And I'm inclined to agree. It might go that way. They need to work on better ways to make the, the cream of the crop rise to the top. But to go back to what we were talking about, early access. Would I personally review an early access game as I would uh, a fully released game? I probably wouldn't, but I can see the point of view that you should because you are still charging people and it's not a reduced price. At least, a, well, in most cases it's not a reduced price. You just get a guaranteed version of the finished game, assuming they actually finish the game and it doesn't stay in early access limbo for years and years and years like so many other games have. I would say I would be... I mean, like like my Lights Lucas, I do a lot of early access coverage in that series, and I always warn people what they're seeing is early and glitchy, and I do always warn people if they are interested in buying that you aren't buying into a finished thing, you're buying in to help them finish the game. You're essentially buying your way into helping them bug test, and that's an interesting thing to keep in mind with early access. It's almost like you're paying them to test their game for them. And is that okay? Well, yeah, because you're doing it, you're not being forced to, you're doing it willingly because you want to help, because you see promise in what might come of the game, and you get a finished version of it when it's done. Perhaps other perks as well, I don't know, some games do additional early access perks. But to go back round to the main point, I wouldn't. I think you have to definitely, well, if you do a review of an early access game, you definitely have to reword things, you have to you have to refocus what you complain about if there is indeed complaints and you also have to warn people of the early access dangers. I like that DZ has that as their description on the Steam Store page. It doesn't say anything about the zombie stuff until you press on it and you go into the information about the game. It just has that big warning. Don't buy this if you don't want to test. And I think that should be a prerequisite of all early access games. You should definitely, in fact, when you go to purchase, Steam should have a, an additional pop-up saying, are you absolutely sure you want to buy something on Early Access? Here's what Early Access means. If you want more information, press here. I would do that, and I think that would be fair. But still, let's see what that other message was. Um, oh, that was Magic Mumbo again. He was replying to the thing about YouTube as well. Okay, so that looks like I've covered the only question I got from Twitter this time. Again, I'm recording this quite early on a, on a Friday, actually. I usually record, record on a Saturday, but still. So what did I want to cover? Well, if we go over to my notes, I wanted to cover two things. One really quick thing first, because someone actually approached me about this a little while ago, in that they wanted to support me, but they didn't want to support me on Patreon because they didn't want another subscription, because they had subscriptions to, you know, Hula whatever, tons of other stuff, and they wanted to just make a direct donation. Now, I'm not that keen on direct donations. I let them because they were adamant about it and that we just did not want to do Patreon. So I set up, well, at the time, I just gave them a shared PayPal link that I have with family members. And since then, I have actually set up a proper donation link. It's on my YouTube channel page if you do want to go that route. It's not going to be linked in any of my videos. It's only going to be mentioned on the, the About tab of my channel page. But I would say please consider being a patron on my Patreon page rather than just directly donating to me. Why? Well, you might be saying, well, why? At least you get 100% of it there rather than the uh, Patreon taking a portion of the funds. You're right, but Patreon takes 7%. In fact, they take something like 4% and then it's 3% goes to the credit card fees. I don't mind only getting 93% when I work in an industry where Google takes approximately 45% before I get anything. Also, if you do it via Patreon, you're getting something else out of it rather than just helping me out of the goodness of your heart. You're getting perks, you're getting shoutouts, you're getting mentions in my vlogs, you're getting mentioned in the Steam group. And also I added tabs to, uh, reward tiers rather, to send business cards that are signed and stuff like that. You know, stuff that technically doesn't have any value but it might to you. And at least you're getting something for it rather than just doing a straight up donation. And that makes me feel more comfortable. I would compare what I do on Patreon to how people who are partnered on Twitch do their subscription. It's like technically when you do a subscription on Twitch to someone who is at that level, you are you're t you're t basically donating to them as well because you're supporting them right you're supporting them as a, as a monthly thing and you get something in return you get access you get their icon next to your name when you talk in chat and you get any unique 
emoticons that they make and people love using emoticons on Twitch so I see the value in that, you're getting something as well. So I compare Patreon to that and that's why I'm more comfortable with that than direct donation however I am just bringing it up to say that the option is there should anyone else feel the same. Interesting to note by the way, I consider Patreon to be a better course than Twitch. Like say I could stream and say I, I, had, I was big enough to have partnership on Twitch, I would still be driving people to Patreon rather than subscribing to me on Twitch. Why? Well, you won't hear this from anyone who is actually a Twitch partner because they're legally obligated in their contract not to say, but the split with Twitch is 50-50. So you subscribe to someone on Twitch for a fiver or five dollars, I should say, five dollars a month. Twitch gets half of that and I don't think that's fair or really, I mean, you should get to choose. You're wanting to support the person you've subscribed to on Twitch and you're actually only uh, you're only supporting them half of what you give, which I don't like. With Patreon, you're supporting the person with 93% of what you give. So, and you're still getting stuff for it. I mean, I, I granted a donation is 100%, but you don't get anything in return other than gratitude, obviously. Very thankful if you do do that, but I would prefer if you please, if you want to help me out, do it via Patreon, because at least you get something else out of it. You get a bunch of perks. That's all I wanted to say on that. The final thing that I wanted to talk about today, and probably won't take long, and this is a bit of like talking shop again, it's also a bit of advice if you're interested and you have a YouTube channel of your own. I was given some thought, or I did a, an Ask Me Anything on the Let's Play subreddit, which quite, it went quite well. I was actually quite happy with it. I might do it again in the future sometime. And it was while I was ans asking, oh, asking, answering questions that a subject got brought up that made me think about my videos and how they get rated in search rankings and whatnot. And if you don't know, thanks to the reply girl craze from a couple of years ago, audience retention is now super important, along with everything else, you know, likes and, and views, etc., to how high up the search rankings you get. So I was thinking, and I realised there was a fundamental flaw with how I make my videos regarding audience retention, and that's the 10 second outro I have where I have like, press this button to subscribe, press this button for the, the previous video in the series. No one really uses those for a start, and also they add on 10 seconds of time that most people will just click away from. And I realised it because I do it to other people's videos as well. And that's affecting my audience retention in a negative way. I mean, ten, I mean, when I watch my videos back to make sure they uploaded okay, I don't watch the end of it. So that should have been my bloody cue. So my, my advice regarding audience retention if you're a YouTuber is don't do what I did. Don't do an outro screen because no one will ever click the annotations really. I know YouTube and some networks will say they do but they don't really. I, I, I have the numbers to back it up, not at hand but in my analytics. So I would say to keep your audience retention up, definitely do away with an outro if you have it. Maybe. I mean I'm going to give it a go. It's going to, I've got a backlog of videos sitting on my desktop load with, you know, with the outro still in it so it's going to be a while before I can test this theory. I'm not going to be able to like next week go over and say well this is the difference I saw and no, it's going to have to be like two or three weeks from now. But yeah I'm going to give it a go of not having an outro plus. I am very appreciative to Toby for making it by the way if you're listening but it has that copyrighted picture of Negascot. Oh I absolutely totally forgot last week to say thank you for the fan art I got. Shit. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I got the first bit of fan art up, well, excusing the, the the amazing thing that Gale Force Gaming did when he drew my mage character fighting Flexile Sentry in MS Paint. That was fantastic. But I actually got a, a fan art where it's not Negascot, it's just a fairly similar flick character in the same style, and I'm now using it everywhere. I love it. So that's another reason why I, I was thinking of, oh, I'll need a new outro now because I don't want to use the copyrighted picture of Negascot from Scott Pilgrim, if you don't know. And if you don't know, I would highly suggest reading those graphic novels, they're very good. The movie was awful, but the graphic novels are great. Apart from the last one. Anyway, so I was thinking, oh, I'm going to need to make a new outro, and then that's when I got to thinking with the Ask Me Anything thing on Reddit about audience retention and whatnot, but, oh, I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot, I think. So I'm going to run a little test and see if that makes a difference going forward. You're not going to see it until, like, until the tail end parts of the Spider-Man playthrough are going up, which I have finished recording by the way. It was reasonably short as expected. It's going to be 12 parts I think. I was editing the, uh, the last two parts earlier this morning. Yeah, 12 parts I think. So that's going to conclude everything I have to talk about this week. 
look out for me saying on Twitter when I'm about to record the next one if you want to get your questions or just topics of discussion in via that or if you're not going to be around because you're in a different time zone etc I will go through the comments of this video so feel free to leave any question and or topic to discuss there as well and I will see you next week so thank you very much for listening next week will not be the last one of the month there's still two to go so that's fine and thank you to everyone who has also started supporting me on Patreon. I've had a few new patrons this month, possibly as a result of doing the exclusive Prison Architect series, which I'm thoroughly enjoying. And yeah, so thank you. See you next week. Thank you for listening, and ta-ta for now.